This is Naomi Johnson, who I met at a business enterprise meeting some time ago. Mm -hmm. And she runs a company that helps people to develop their LinkedIn profiles. And I thought she'd be appropriate for talking to US translation students, because LinkedIn is the way that professional translators are linked to each other, and it's a place where people look for people when they need people for projects. So it's a really good idea to have a professional profile on that. Now, my LinkedIn profile is rather shameful, so I would recommend you don't look at it yet until I've seen <laughs> Naomi <you> know, <laughs> in better circumstances. But she knows an awful lot about it, so hopefully this will be useful to you. Good. Excellent. Thanks for having me along. Um, who here right now is actually on LinkedIn? Got it sort of there. Is that a no? A no. And um, okay, so good mix back. That's good. And how many people have actually sort of played with their profile and tried to make something out of it for your career? So once we have a very low percentage. That's good. And um, is it? Have you? Uh, what well, could be anyone? Has anyone actually been approached for any work on LinkedIn or tried to use it to get work? No. Okay. Cool. <laughs> okay, so to give you a little idea of who I am, um, I am founded by myself. What? I'm going to give you a new version for that. Sometimes I edit these things. Um, I am the founder of the profile company and I work in the innovation space at the university. We've been going for 10 months now, but I've actually been working in this space for three years. I was working with another company who are in partnership with LinkedIn. Um, and I've run the Rock Your Profile stand at LinkedIn's global conference twice, including one of their sub-conferences as well. So that makes three times. Um, I'm also the author of What to Put on Your LinkedIn Profile, which I wrote because I kept repeating myself all the time. And I thought, do you know what, I'll write it down for people. Um, and where, how I got into this was when I was working at the other company, we did training on LinkedIn. And it's my job to sell the training. And a way of actually getting to meet the people, give them something that they would then want to talk to me, was I offered them a LinkedIn profile review. And it was very, very popular because everyone likes to know about themselves and how they're doing and what's that feedback. And what I found was the more I was talking to people, the more I realised that when I actually started asking them questions but in depth about what they did, it really wasn't represented on the, right, on the profile. They weren't using everything that was available to them. And worse, they really weren't communicating who they were and that actual real value and worse again, they weren't really ticking the boxes of what a buyer would be looking for. So I decided to really take this to task because even if I get after I gave them this advice away for free, I then go. They'd come on the training course. They'd learn how to use the platform, but then I also I noticed that they weren't taking on that advice and actually using it. And it's quite obvious, really. People find it difficult to write about themselves. They they can't see their own benefits. I mean, copywriting is a hard thing. If you're writing about yourself, and you're not in marketing, it's, it's, a, it's a difficult thing. So it would be something that people would often procrastinate about, and yet it's the most important thing they could do, because for all of your activities on LinkedIn, people are going to go, well, that's an interesting post, who's sharing that? Or someone says connected with Senator, who's sharing that? This is an interesting discussion in this group, who is this? And everything you do on LinkedIn is going to come back to your profile and who you are. So you really want to make the most of that retail space. Um, so I began the company 10 months ago. I work now with a lot of um, entrepreneurs, solo entrepreneurs, sales teams, and um, company directors and sales teams. The main reason I focus there is because I think there's just a wealth of opportunities there, and it's what I know. I'm not necessarily a recruiter, and I think it's kind of unethical to tell people I'm going to help them with their job hunt when I haven't actually been a recruiter on the buying end of someone as, a, as an employee. So I tend to stay away from that space, but it's much more around... Um, developing your network, leveraging the trust in your network to bring in new opportunities and open up new doors. Um, and I'll tell you some stories as we go through about how people have found my um, LinkedIn profile and how that's converted and become new business as we go through. Because um, I think it'll really bring it home to you, uh, the potential of LinkedIn, and especially if you're going to be working as freelance translators, exactly how to set yourself apart. Um, and I haven't bought translation services, but I have bought copywriting services editing. So I've kind of got an idea from the buyer side of what would get you right, right at the top of the list for being selected. Um, so that's who I am. Um, this slide means I don't think actually because it's over 400 million uh, registered users now all around the, around the world. It's increasing, increasing and it really is the leading platform. I think Germany has another platform 
um, that they're using. But because obviously the world has adapted to LinkedIn, that one is now starting to go down. LinkedIn's taking over. But this gives you a really good idea to see that this is a world-changing sort of platform. And as you are translators looking at a worldly audience, this really is the best place for you. Um, just to give you an idea, um, LinkedIn is the equivalent of going to a networking event, whereas Facebook is the equivalent of going to Centre Parks on the weekend. <laughs> um, can anyone think why I might say that? Uh, I'll just tell you. <laughs> oh, did you have a suggestion? Yeah, definitely. And I think also I can use um, LinkedIn rather than Butlin. I'm oh, sorry, Centre Parks rather than Butlins. Because it does, Facebook still gets the CEO. It still gets the, the highly professional person with money to spend and big decision makers inside large companies. It's still, it's all there. Um, and so it kind of your target market would be at Centre Parks. If you went to Centre Parks on the weekend, I'm pretty sure you'd find some influential people there who could give you a job. But if you had stalked them, you knew their name, you knew they were going to be there, and you showed up, and you walked up to them in the swimming pool, and they get their kids around them, and you walked up and said, hi, I'm a translator for such and such, um, how's your business, because you wouldn't even networking, I do this, do you want to employ me? You would never do that anyway. Um, but if you start having this like, formal business conversation in that environment, you're going to get pushed away, because he's that, he or she is there with their family, they're having a social time, they don't want to talk about work. If you had been interviewed on a Friday and randomly bumped into them on a Sunday and you asked them anything about that job interview um, and you pushed it, by Monday you would be off the list. But if you saw them and you went, oh my goodness, what a coincidence, how are you, nice to meet you, yeah, these are your kids, these are my kids, oh it's lovely, do you come here often, all those kind of things. And you just had that conversation and if they brought it up, fine, but, if, but you should never bring it up. If you just did that, you'd be top of the list by Monday. Um, it's about respecting the environment you're in. So you wouldn't want to run around centre parks being a drunk in the loot and uh, swearing and shouting and not being you know, a nice person that they'd want in their company. But it, there is a different environment. Whereas if you think about LinkedIn as a networking event, whatever is okay at a networking event, a business networking event, is okay on LinkedIn because it is the, the online equivalent. So if you wouldn't go to a breakfast meeting at 7.30 in the morning wearing your wedding dress or your suit or your pretty dress on the night before, if you wouldn't do that, then don't do that on LinkedIn. Showing up, having like a, a beer drinking photo, and I actually had one of my clients email me and said, can you believe this photo this person's got? They had a lanyard around their neck and they had a beer and I thought they're, they're at a trade conference because they had the lanyard and he thinks it's appropriate so there must be something there and just reading his picture I was like that is a trade conference and he's having a drink at the end of it but the guy said he looks aggressive and it just it just didn't work for him whatsoever and and I, I translated that to if you had an employee who went to represent your company at 7.30 in the morning at a networking event and they showed up still wearing last night's clothing or just even smelling of alcohol and they're giving out a, your business card for your company that's going to embarrass you. Um, so you, you do want yourself and anyone working for you looking good because it is all reflecting back on, on you, yourself and your company. Um, which is a relevant conversation for some of you, others not. But it just gives you an idea of how to be looking at LinkedIn. Um, and I think it also gives you what I call a social compass. You can be quite nervous about what to post and how to post it. Is this the right thing? Is it not the right thing? If you would do it professionally, if you would get up and do a lecture on this, if you would present this or talk about it in a, an interview or a business meeting, then you've got to, you know, you, you can go ahead with it. Whereas if, you know, you had a really fun night out the night before your cat did something stupid and you're sitting there with a client talking about your translation and you wouldn't bring that up, and then you wouldn't bring it up on LinkedIn. Um, do you see what I mean? There, there's a real, it really helps you to know how to navigate yourself around the platform. But that's just more on the using it. What I want to do is talk to you much more about marketing yourself on it. Um, so, first impressions really do count. Um, it really is the norm now to research prospects, candidates, suppliers, and colleagues on LinkedIn before the meeting. Um, but what's interesting about the translation market is you probably would have somebody go there and Google your skill set to buy, like they would do the yellow pages. 
Um, it's actually extremely unlikely for many other jobs that that would happen. LinkedIn's very much about leveraging your trust in your network. Um, but in terms of I need a skill or type of job, um, personally when I need stuff like this, I go to Upwork and go through the profiles and the people there. Um, and then I might check them out on LinkedIn to see how they're really showing up in the world. Um, but LinkedIn for you really does work as a platform for being found. So keywords are going to be important for you. You want some of the keywords that your buyers would be looking for in your skills section so that keep those words come up. You want those words in the summary and in the headline as well. Um, so this is one profession where keywords works, whereas other clients, I'm, it's not really a big deal. Um, so you want your profile to look good. Um, suppliers will be looking for you. Prospects will want to check you out first. And um, you really want to be asking, what does your LinkedIn profile say about you? Um, the profile, you, you create your profile by working out what your outcome is. What is it you want from your, your profile? Are you a freelancer? Are you wanting a, a constant flood of work coming in? Are you therefore having to do like nurture needs, do sales conversations, and then do the work, and then keep that client happy, and not just happy, but in their frame of mind, the next time they want something, you are the person they go back to. So you could not have had any work from one person for two years, but because of your updates, and because you're there doing different things, your front of mind, and to them it was like yesterday worked with you, and you would still be their first choice. You don't want to get forgotten by these clients because it's that address for the clients that is your biggest asset in your business. And as a self-employed freelancer, this is your business. So keeping those clients there and nurturing them is really, really important. And honestly, it could be two years ago since they last worked with you, but they like an update you you did, and um, they they come back to you. And they can also be a referrer as well without even realising it, which I will go into. So you really want to think about what is it I'm doing? What is my what is my objective with my life, my career, my business, and what do I need to project? What, what's the outcome? So let's assume that you're freelancers wanting freelance jobs. Um, some of these jobs might be static five days a week. Some of them might be three days a week. Some of them could be other pieces. Probably some of you would take the, you know, the hard bit of three days per week and then some freelance stuff on the side. Um, you want to be thinking about that. So work out who it is and what it is you want and then put yourself in their mindset. What do they need to know in order to buy? So um, I have a slide for this. Let me just um, go back. No, I took that slide out. Why did I do that? Okay, 60% of a buying decision is now made online. This means that people are doing their research online and wanting to have all their questions answered before they come and buy from you. Sometimes it's actually 100%. Um, who here has ever bought an iPad or an iPod? Uh, yeah, an iPad or a, a new computer. Um, years ago, I mean, I just remember this as a child with a stereo. You would go, but I remember spending Saturday afternoons with my family in a shop looking at this, this stack hi-fi going through all the features with the salesperson and after three hours he'd finally get his sale. We just don't do that today. If I want to buy something, we, we, we Google it, we look at the reviews, we read about the features, we see about it, and if we want to touch it and feel it, we would go to the shop and look at it and then we'd even go buy it online. Mm -hmm. um, which is like these companies having to work out how to deal with that. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, the buying decision, most people now, when they buy, like I bought my Mac and I did not speak to a salesperson. I did when I actually made the purchase. The first one I bought online, so nobody was involved in that. No rep sales rep from Apple was involved. The second time, I um, was umming and ahhing about whether well, I should just go cheaper. And I went, don't do that for these reasons. And I went, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Why on earth when I cut corners? Of course I'm buying this Mac for like more money than I have. Um, and we, and I, I made the purchase. So the decision was already made. She just needs to take me a little while, ask Hank. But those kind of products, the set, we're already pre-sold. And what you want people to do is to be pre-sold on you. There might be a need to pre-sell them on the need for translation. There might be a need, and then there will definitely be the need to pre-sell them on you and your skills. They could choose anyone. And a lot of the times, people don't really care who they, 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 they want, they get. They just want to know you can do the job, you're easy to work with, good communication, good deadlines, and that you're fairer and you do the job. I mean, when I've hired copy editors, I will just go, yeah, you, you've got good reviews, let's give you a go. And that's it. They just get a go. 
um, and I check their work out and we go from there and it's all about how they behave. In this market, I think what you'll find is that a lot of people don't know how to buy your services. They don't know that translating from one language to another can completely change the meaning. And we've seen it go through Facebook where you know, there's something that's translated and has a completely different meaning in your language. Um, and it's educating the buyer to make sure they know to get someone who knows this. And I think you, know, you can really set yourself apart in, in demonstrating... I, and, it, and the thing is, if I were to interview three translators and I don't really know how to buy, buy I just like, I'm going to launch in Germany. Okay, great. So I'm going to need some translators to, to take my website, change it, translate my LinkedIn profile in, so I can have a German one as well. And I sit down with somebody and they, they say all these nice things. Oh, that's really good, that's really good. Right, okay, now I'm going to go and interview the third person, the second person. And the second person says to me, well, what we're going to have to look at is whether what you've written translates into German the same, if the meaning's the same, or is it actually going to cause events? Me and Danielle, we were talking earlier about it means one thing, the, one thing in this language, but it means a donkey in that language, and therefore it just doesn't translate. The whole thing has to change. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I didn't know that. Oh my word. Yeah, I, that's really good. So you have knowledge in this and you've done that. Okay, right. Next person. I'm now a more ed educated buyer. And I go, so, do you, do you take these things into consideration? Do you, because they haven't volunteered it to me, so now I'm having to ask, I don't quite know how to ask the question, like, do you do, you do this? Like, is this something you would consider? Oh yeah, of course I do, yeah, well, obviously I would. Which one are you going to believe? The second one, because they said it first. So where you've got the advantage is educating your buyer. Now each one of you will have a niche area. Um, it's, every single person has one. It's the industries you've worked in in the past, your knowledge of the insurance industry, construction industry, medical industry. All of those things create the credibility that will get, set you apart now. And for some people, you won't be a good match because you don't understand perhaps the medical industry. And some of you will be the absolute perfect match because you are from, you do know that language, um, that repertoire of language. And, and you know, like there's medical secretaries, very specialist. Um, and so you really want to communicate this on your LinkedIn profile, up front and honestly. And you, you really want to show a bit of a passion about it as well. That you, you read the journals, you keep up to date with the languages and the changes that are going on. Because when someone's hiring someone, these days, they want to know that you're bringing more to the table than a function. I'm just doing the job, and there it is, it's done, I'm really not passionate about it. What they really want is someone who's going to come along and go, yeah, so this and this and this, and what I've decided is that this would make it better. And I was reading here, and I was learning here, and this is going to take it to the next level. That's the kind of person that gets hired and stays hired. So with my copy editors, when they actually write back a little note on it, and they go, this doesn't make sense to me, do you mean to say that? Or um, you put my favourite client story, and in this story, it's actually my favourite carer story. You might want to change that. I write back to them and say, fantastic. They just stay with me forever because I know that they care and they're paying attention and they're not just performing a function. So these are things that you could be operating as as part of the way you work, but you really want to sell this on LinkedIn. So you want to be filling out your summary to say, um, you know, I believe I when when working with clients, I take the time to really listen to what the marketing campaign is about. What is the what is the end result for the audience? and ensure that the translation has the same effect in that language, that there aren't any nasty surprises, or that actually the message would just fall flat because it wasn't their intention, it wasn't what they were looking to communicate. So don't just take words. Because then you're saying, I'm not just taking words, I'm thinking about the end result. For anyone, that would get you hired. Be the one who says it first, rather than have the buyer assume that you do it. If you be the one first, people go, that person really cares. And you will then come to the top of the list in the people that they're going to hire. So they could be, most companies have to find three suppliers um, to get quotes from an interview with. You could be the third one, just they've got someone they, they're pretty sure they want to work with. Um, they might have met them for some reason, they're just higher up on their list. And you're the final one coming in. They do the search on Google, because Google will actually bring you up LinkedIn search results second. You've got a keyword. It brings you up on that result, come through to your LinkedIn profile, and it's just like, oh my gosh, 
I have to meet this person. Suddenly, you can be the first person in the running. So you, you can really take you take yourself up in that regard. Um, so define your outcome. Make it relevant to your audience. So thinking, what do they need to know in order to buy? So help t teach your audience how to buy by pointing out the things that they go, oh my gosh, I didn't think of that before. I must, you know, look for those things. Um, think about their objections as well. Things that they might have and go, oh, it's so too much trouble. So, for example, having your LinkedIn profile written for you, one of the first things I recognise is that some people might go, I'm just too busy, I've got way too much else to do. So my brand, I knew, had to be fresh and light. They said, oh, that looks easy. And when you read my profile, you might go, that sounds really good. Oh, seriously, another thing to take on? Just forget it. So that's an objection. So I deal with the objection straight away by saying, how we create your profile? Oh, okay, she's going to tell me how. They click on the slide and they go through it, it's the four stages. And it says, literally, it's going to take you 90 minutes to work with me at the beginning, and then however long, 10 minutes at the other end, and I do everything for you. Oh, oh, that feels really tangible. I can, I can see that working now. I can see we can get the benefit. It's really easy without adding to my workload. So I've dealt with an objection. And you're kind of making it tangible as well. So I read someone's profile the other day, and I don't normally approve of profiles but two people last week I actually saw their summary and went oh my gosh they've written a summary exactly how I would write a summary which is really interesting because when I read what they did I realized what the reason is because we have the same approach to business and how to relate to people and what modern day business is about so they had written from that philosophy and it matched and I was like wow then I was said well, what do they do like what what do they sell I don't know I didn't know how to interact with them. I didn't know what to ask of them. One of them, um, I ended up on his mailing list. Um, because I think I emailed him to interview him about his philosophy about business. Um, and so, because I emailed him, I got put on his mailing list. And the mailing list it almost looks personal, but then you read it and you realize it's not. It's a mailing list. It says, I just did an interview with such and such. You can pick up the interview here. Oh, great, there's an interview here. I'll go listen to that. But if you had told me before, I have these um, interviews that you can listen to, I do consultancy, I can do a free half an hour session, um, then we can move into a project that's this size, and I also can do three days consultancy with you every single week and work with you full time. You become, again, much more tangible. Because nobody who's really busy, who's looking for a translator to work with them for three days, is going to take the time, really, to email you and say, are you available for three-day contracts? No, I'm busy every day. And if you're busy every day, are you going to reply to them? So they're like, oh, this is a waste of time. Send a connection message, wait to get connected that particular week, and then we have to wait for the answer to my question, have to ask the question, have to remember to go back. It's a really long, drawn-out process. Make it really easy. Put your telephone number on there, put your email on there, where they can see it without being connected to you. So that's either in advice for contacting or in the summary. Make sure that they know how to get in contact with you in a really fast way and tell them how you work with people. If you're looking for like a long-term contract, say I'm looking for a long-term three-day contract as well as sporadic work assignments, my minimum is um, 300 words and I charge in blocks of half an hour. So people know if I send you like 10 words to translate, you're going to charge me for half an hour. Um, let people get that tangibility so it's like, right, I've got it. I can work with this person. I'm going to invite them to connect, but I'm so urgent about this, I'm going to email them too. Because trust me, if they found you in the yellow pages, your number and your telephone and your email would be there, and they could just take it. Straight off the shelf, I'll have that. Don't have them waiting. It's really, really important. So it's thinking about how the buyer works. Sometimes these things are so urgent, that's just the way it's going to be. Sometimes people will connect with you and they'll say, oh, I'll hold that for later. That's really good, and uh, if I had more time with you, I'd tell you about the tagging function, where you can tag them as people for the future to go back to and just keep in touch with. So make it relevant. Think about um, what they need in order to buy. Think about the questions they normally ask you during the interview process for any job. Understand that it's about you, but it's not for you. This isn't about for your glory. This isn't like, I'm so awesome. This is really thinking about what they need to answer their buying questions to have them go, oh, thank you. <laughs> You're the person for me. Um, so get to know your prospect and what makes them tick. And inside of that is how fast they need to buy sometimes. Um, the questions that they need answering. 
Um, and also, it's thinking about, are they the researcher or are they the decision maker? If they are the researcher looking for suppliers and they have to take it to somebody, what can you give them to take to that decision maker that makes them then look good and the decision maker go, oh yeah, excellent, we'll have her. You know, it's a, making sure all the normal little questions are answered. Um, add value, help solve a problem. So, if you are, for example, somebody who is translating in the medical profession, you've got a real repertoire of that, you really want to accelerate, like, accentuate those skills and that history of what you've done. Um, but maybe for this person who's doing the hiring, you could have a sideshow or a download on there that says all the questions to ask when hiring a medical translation, um, a medical translator. And then all the checklists, because now you've added value, you've helped them to make a purchasing decision. Like, what are the differences? Someone said to me um, recently, could you please, uh, they said, I need this edited in American English. What? What? What's the difference? I went to my American proofreader and I said, what's the difference? And she said, oh, the, the comma goes here, and this happens differently, and they do this differently. Oh my gosh, I didn't know that. But I hire editors all the time, I just didn't know that. But if you were someone, so you can see that, if that was a speciality and a niche for her, my proofreader could have gone, and here's all the things you need to know and to look for. So I've added value. Now, could I go and do that myself because she's told me that? Yes, I could. The whole reason I'm hiring someone is because I don't trust myself to do that. I, do, I shouldn't be editing my own stuff. People who can speak a bit of the language shouldn't be translating their own stuff. They need a professional to do it for them. And that's another thing as well. It's educating a buyer. Why do you need a professional? If I speak a basic language, why can I not do it myself? Well, for all of these reasons, it doesn't translate the same. Um, in English, we're much more direct. In other languages, they need to be... We were talking about Spanish. It needs to be more eloquent language. shows off your professionalism. It's these cultural things. If you can educate your buyer about those things, you set yourself apart. And um, so that's what I mean by adding value, helping them solve a problem. Um, I give it away for free. I mean, I give away um, free LinkedIn profile reviews to people. Um, and I just tell them everything. Partly it works to my strength that I can't not tell people what I think they need to do. Um, and like, I just don't want to have to charge for it, I'm just like, just tell them. But they love it, and they remember me, and most of them buy, because they actually want the help with the imp implementation. And that's what you need to realise you're selling, is the implementation. So give away um, your information about how you do it in your advice, but charge for the implementation, and you will skyrocket above all of those who are still stuck in the information age of business, when they've sold information, now we're selling implementation. People are done with too much of these workbooks, do it yourself, it's like, someone just do it for me. Um, be genuine and authentic, be yourself. Be passionate about what you do and tell people. I believe that this is a really critical area because um, I believe and, and share your philosophy to help people buy into it. That sentence, I believe, is a really passionate one. Um, it's a really important one because it suddenly translates from you talking as a service and a delivery person to a real person. It's the difference between a website which looks like a company to I'm now talking to a person. It gives me that viewpoint into you as a person. And people buy people. That is the key thing. They, people buy people. You can be great at translating, but if they don't like you, or they just can't get a grip on who you are as a person, there won't be any loyalty or trust there. They'll just go, oh, that job's over. Oh, I'll take this person now. They can do this job. But actually, it's when we, we show up as real people for people and we, we build rapport with them that we become their chosen supplier and that loyalty is there and they'll always come back to you. So that you can achieve this through your LinkedIn profile. Um, consider your prospect's journey through your profile. Don't ask for too much too soon. Um, if you were doing consultancy of some other type, I think people are very quick to buy your services or at least give you a, a chance. Other industries, if it's sort of like, buy a LinkedIn profile from me right now. No, I don't know if it's right for me yet. Oh my gosh. And even saying to them half an hour on the phone is too much as well. Follow up on the page, see our updates. You know, an easy first yes, something that's easy for them to like ease their way into wanting to work with you and find out more. Um, and have that call to action. Invite people to get in touch with them, with you. Tell them it's okay to email you. Say, email me um, an overview of your assignment and I'll give you a quote. Again, helping the buyer. Why don't you have a form that people fill in um, with their job that outlines, is this much, this is the objective, <coughs> da, 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 da. 
you can set that up in a Google form and link out to it as well. And people will go, oh yeah, all right, I'll just... Because then you know you're getting all the answers answered. They know they're going to get a precise quote because they're not, you're not going to have this back and forth. So for, if you would like your job quoted, um, please fill in this form and I will give you... Um, and as this will help me to give you a more direct quote and then we can have a chat about it. Do you see what it means? It stops that back and forth and it just helps move the things forward. Um, okay, so your profile overall, it builds a story and contributes to the sales journey of your prospect. Each element establishes the credibility and builds your personal brand. So, next, like I said, the photo is really important. This acts as your virtual handshake and helps people to remember you. Um, it, keep it professional with character at all times. So I had one guy I, I spoke to about his profile and he was, he worked, so there's this, in um, recruitment, there are 13 recruitment agencies that are the most powerful in the UK and they all club together and they all share stuff. And they are actually run by Kate Middleton's uncle. And I got to meet him and talk to him and he said, I need you to speak to my guy who works in his company that oversees all of them. And so he's kind of like, knows what's going on, and he sends all the people everywhere. And he works from home because it's just him. And he goes, the biggest problem is I've just got a puppy. I was like, okay. And he it barks in the background all the time. And it's like, sorry, sorry, sorry. And he's trying to be professional, but this puppy's barking. I said, well, if it's just you and you work in this really niche environment, then you can be full of character. I said, if it's gonna bark during the working day, why don't you bring it into your photo? your LinkedIn profile can have the dog and make it part of your brand. So if you are a translator working from home, people know that. I know that my copy editor's got her kids running around, but that's okay, her work's still good. Um, it doesn't distract or bother me at all, but if you are having phone calls with the dog shows up, <laughs> people go, oh, is that, is that Percy? Yeah, it's Percy. You can have a chat about the dog and build rapport, and it helps. Um, so if you've got something like that, character, just bring the character in, me and my dog. <laughs> Get it right, though. It's, it, you, you can't just... Yeah, you'd have to balance that one, but it, it, it works really well because um, it adds that character to you. Okay, so the headline shares the value of what you provide and the problem you solve, making your prospect curious to know more. Keywords are going to be really important to you. Um, you're going to want to make sure that you get another language um, that you start with, so a French translator, um, for example. And yes, we do need to know if it's French, English to French or French to English, but you, the French translator can get the curiosity and you can answer that further down the profile. You don't have, don't, don't put in your summary unless you've got um, an offer in, I mean, headline. Um, does anyone know what I mean by headline or should I bring up LinkedIn? Bring it up, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Okay, I can now run this without the slide actually, <laughs> just do it on LinkedIn. Oh, here we go, Chrome. Um, okay, so I'm going to go to my profile. Um, this will actually show it to me as in edit mode, so when you've got the pencils on, that's how you're editing. Um, but if you click on view profile as, you'll actually see it as everybody else sees it, which is really handy because it means that things aren't going to jump around and you can just see it exactly as it is. Um, I can't wait to find the time to update mine because I need to make some changes. <laughs> it was perfect, but I'm so happy with that. I read it this morning and I'm still happy. Um, okay, so this here is your headline. And so, expert LinkedIn profile writer. So, putting the word writing in there is really important because it's actually, I think, I'm the only person that actually will write um, for non CV based people. Um, there are career people who write. Um, so, that's really important that it's defining it straight away. I do the writing, I'm not just going to talk about it. Personal branding, I've recently put that in there because that is a hot topic and it's where we're going. Um, it did have in there how to get leads and what to do with them. So this is like the sentence that I was meaning. You want to have a sentence that involves people in your message. Helping the medical industry translate their ma ma marketing message to the German audience. Okay, great, now I get what you're about, what you stand for now. So putting something in there that helps you, what you stand for, is really good. Um, and I put something personal at the end. The, there was a reason I did that at the time. I probably get it off. See, 
sugar free vegan at the time, I had somebody that I was um, helping people get to his health freaky health freak um, events, and I had lots of results in that area. I wanted to talk about it, but I needed people to talk to me about it because I was the supplier, and so I couldn't just go, oh, and by the way, um, but this was something they go, oh, why did you put that? That's interesting. Oh, well, because recently, and then I was able to have that conversation, so it worked really nicely in that. Um, now it just makes me not buy the chocolate bar downstairs because Sarah would go, hang on a second, I just bought the chocolate bar, and, just, and that stops me eating bar things. <laughs> no, but that's, um, if you're into jazz music, pop it there. You might find um, your person buying from you loves jazz music, and it's a conversation you can have. It's that relationship building, it's that rapport building. It's the skills that the one percenters of the universe know about. They all know it's about relationship first, then business. The, sweet, the Swiss, they talk for 10 minutes on, they literally time it, 10 minutes on personal things before they dare talk about a business thing. You need to always have that little personal element, and this helps. And one guy I know, when he does speaking events, because he has happy chocoholic on there, is everyone else will get bottles of wine as a thank you gift, and he'll get a box of chocolates. <laughs> it, it's a really, um, and football fan, one guy puts football fan on there. I used to work with him, and I used to like, go through his LinkedIn profile messages quite a lot. He used to get offered tickets to football matches all the time. He'd be like, someone would just email and say, oh, I see you're a football fan. I've got a spare ticket on Saturday. Do you want it? Perfect. Why would you not want that? Um, okay, so your location is going to come up. Location for you guys is probably not important for your buyers. It could be if you need to go in. Um, but that's something you probably want to deal with down below. You're not going to be able to get your location off. It does help people for you become really tangible. Um, so later on in your summary, just make sure that you say, I work virtually with anybody in the world, whatever it is that's right for you, because um, that's a question for your marketplace that they're going to need answering. Um, how many of you have web pages, websites? Okay. Um, for those who do go down that road, and honestly, I would think of your LinkedIn profile, because it is, it, it is the search directory, it is the place. I doubt any of you will actually need a, a website. You might have a portfolio online, um, which is probably worth not having on LinkedIn because it would be too much. Some things have gone on LinkedIn, as I'll go through in a minute. This um, contact info is really good um, because it, um, you can put it here, view my, view my profile. So I've got create engaging link, create profiles that engage, free profile review in my books. You can change those to be whatever you want them to be and just link out to your page. So that could be all the same website to three different landing pages, different pages on the website. Um, and it's good to label them because it guides your, pri your buyer. If it says my blog or company website, people are like, oh, I don't want to click on that and open a window, I don't know where it's going. Just think about how you behave on the platform. It's like, that. So help them out, let them know what's on the other side of it. Um, you've got the ability to put posts, and you could do this at some point if you are, really want to get in your soapbox about a particular topic and be a piece person of influence, a thought leader about things in your industry that you're niching about, this is a really good thing to do. And then you've got your summary, um, which I've, I've mentioned a few things to go in there, and then you've got your experience. Um, Experience is a really important one because it is what has made you credible to do what you do today. So you, um, your history, the companies that you've worked for before, full-time, part-time, McDonald's, whatever, um, they all actually qualify you to do what you do today. So if I had become a translator, which I have a terrible language, that would never have happened. But when I was 17, I started out in the insurance industry. For, two, for a year, I worked in insurance. So if an insurance company were looking for a translator and saw that I had insurance on there, they go, well, she would understand our industry. Let's interview her. Um, or catering, or hospitality. Um, you know, all these different industries. Medical. I keep coming back to that one, but it is actually a huge one. That there is different languages. There's, there's some really important stuff. So do make sure you fill this out. Even if you weren't a translator in there, your knowledge and experience having been in that industry will help you now. I put this every day, and it's like from, you know, I could talk about a particular subject, and um, it from years ago. So you want to? Um, Can I ask put, about the company logos? Do you ask for permission, or do you just? No. Okay. So this is what's interesting. A company logo. Mm -hmm. If I open it in a new tab, it opens my company page. The reason why it gets there 
is because I have a company page and I've linked the two together. Right. The company page acts like a magazine where you can share articles um, about your subject or your topic or you can just not share articles, it's entirely up to you. But that come, if people are following it, then it'll <laughs> come up in their feet. Whatever, come away. <laughs> I don't know what it's like to do. Um, that's how it gets there. But how about the past, you know, the logo? Okay, the so the way you would do that is um, you go, when you're in editing, you go to change company name, delete what you've got already, Retype it in. As you retype it in, if the company page exists, it will um, come up in the drop down and you click it. And then it and connects it automatically. Yeah. Yeah. So you will show up as a person. You don't have to cut and paste the, the logo from anywhere. No. Okay. You know, not at all. Um, so I'm just going to cover a few more bits and then we need to wrap up, I'm assuming. Um, so these are... Um, so how we create your LinkedIn profile. So I was saying that this is uh, one of the things I have to help with objections and how we do it. We literally the interview, the writing your profile, writing your advice, setting up your profile, would you like a profile review, so that's my call to action. So I thought I'd take these. <laughs> um, I just changed it a little bit. And then on here you've got some you could put some samples of your work up. So this one is on SlideShare. You can see there the logo, it's coming through from SlideShare, which is a sister um, company of LinkedIn. And um, as you can see here, you could actually go and read the beginning of my book. Um, so that's really useful. And then you can use this in all different ways. This book, I've literally just done a slide share about what the book's about and a call to action at the end to buy. Um, so this is the kind of thing where you might put a form for people to fill out. You might put an education piece in there about how you work with people or about how they should be recruiting. Really think about this. And then you've got your recommendations as well. So on my recommendations, I currently have 14 on this particular job. I actually won't let anybody. Where's it come? I won't let anybody send me a, um, a recommendation for my company unless I've written their LinkedIn profile. If they want to send me, it was great. We just did a good talk. I would put myself down under the author as a speaker, author. Um, you want your clients to know, you don't want your friends going, oh, she's really nice, she's great around the office, she's a really good friend, she brings lemon cake in all the time. You actually want that person to write something really useful about how you helped them. Um, because that educates your buyer as well. Are you, do you meet deadlines? Do you communicate well? Do you bring more to the table and more thought to, the, to it than expected? If you've heard that person say to you at any time, um, oh my gosh, thank you so much, you've brought so much there, I wouldn't have thought of that. Guide the person in the testimonial. You can actually write it for them and then ask them to approve it. And make sure you highlight that because, again, this is just more into the marketability of who you are. Say, so, you know, she brings more to the table than expected. We had this situation and she thought about it and offered this idea. Um, don't be afraid. People are busy. They don't have time to write them and they don't know what to write when it comes to a recommendation. So you can write them for them. <laughs> I actually did that for someone, I sent it back to them and we all edited and I said, could you just, uh, would you approve this please? And they're like, oh yeah, something I would have said if I thought of it, but he didn't know what I wanted to like really highlight. Um, okay, so then uh, you've got advice for contacting. This is the piece, you've got projects as well, which might be interesting to use. You can bring other people you're working on that project in on it as well. You've got publications. In the early days, you might want to do links out to big pieces of work you did and just describe, you know, it was a, a 200, pound, 200 page book I translated and this is how I worked on it and link out to an example of it. So this, the publications can work very much as a good portfolio for you and projects can do exactly the same and bring in who you work with them on. And you've then got advice for contacting and this is the bit that will show to everybody whether you are um, connected to them or not. So the abo bit above with the, the websites, that, you can close that off. But this is where you can put the information in that you need people to know when getting in touch. Um, I've got common misspellings for my name. I don't think that function works anymore. So I don't have that. I was going to say I constantly have names. Yeah. <laughs> put it in and see if it works. So I did it for someone recently and I'm like, that's not working. <laughs> and I think they changed it. But the guy who taught me that... You could put bird in, and his thing would still come up. That's <laughs> really weird. Um, education, really, really important. I've got extra courses. It makes sense to me. I keep my, my own education up together. 
and these courses really <coughs> show people um, what it is that we do and how we do it how I do it, like what, what I'm pulling on is my philosophy, so if you are doing CPD, put it in there and say, I really pull on these philosophies of this company um, so you've got your education skills this is going to be really important for you to get those keywords in there and get people endorsing them, I don't like them personally but for you guys, the keywords is really important, voluntary um, testimonials follow groups, use the influence follow people that you want to influence and there's so many things I could say about getting your profile up and going and drawing attention to you. Um, but this talk is really about your profile, so that's where we'll stay when we've got, what is it, three minutes left? Do we finish at three? Yeah, I will finish, sorry. Um, this is actually ten minutes ago. <laughs> um, the, the things that can happen, if you write a status update, this has happened to me a number of times, I've written a status update, from that status update, I've had three or four people like it. I've had people then get in touch with me uh, on messages that I don't know. I'm going to show you this one. Um, they've asked me to connect with them. comes up here. I've, you can hover over here and see what they've said. They can always personalise your message if you can. Click on there and you can reply to them without connecting with them. Ask them why they want to get in touch. What What is it? Are they looking for Trump translation? Um, make sure you're always coming back in here and seeing who's connecting with you. I have done this a number of times, gone back to the people and said, hey, thanks for wanting to connect, just wondered, were you just browsing or you had a particular question? Do you want to talk to me about your profile? I can give you 30 minutes if you like. They said yes, they've come on board within three days and become a client. I said, how did you hear about me on LinkedIn? When I've gone and seen, we've got one mutual friend and that mutual friend, I'm like, oh, well, he liked my status three days ago. So that's how that happened. Um, so it really does work. Um, there's loads you could do. Has that been helpful for how and what to put in your profile? Has it been eye-opening? Mm -hmm. Is that a leading question? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Has anyone got any questions for me? So, well, we don't have a lot of translating experience at the moment. We need to look at previous work experience and pull out of that things that will be relevant. And be yeah, just put your job history on. And, you know, if you've been a manager, um, I was talking to someone the other day who now does fire training, and he's, you know, he did it at Heathrow in Southampton. He ran the whole site. And he has the Chartered Institute of Management, so he's a fellow. And you wouldn't think as a small business owner doing fire training that would be important, but actually it really shows his calibre that he could work in some big organisations, run some big projects. So all of your experience has got you to today, it's absolutely valuable. Um, put it on there as a journey. And just on the last one, you know, when, how you made decisions to become a translator and why, that would be your passion coming through, so you'd want to show that. Um, yeah, put your experience on that. Any other quick questions? Yeah. Is it worth even using LinkedIn Premium? No, it... not, not really. Um, the best thing you can do is get your profile looking really good and use all the free functions. Premium will give you more ability. If you're looking for an actual job, then their job hunting side of things is really good. Go to networking events, connect with everyone you meet with, um, share good updates, share things that they will go out of help for that's interesting, so keep on their radar, they will introduce you. Be really clear on the types of people you want to meet, get into groups where they are, add to conversations, get yourself seen by those kind of people. And have some people you're targeting, like, I really want to work in there. Um, at the moment, you're probably looking at small businesses, would be the, the piecemeal work um, and maybe one day assignments. People who, you can look for people who are looking to go into different markets, go overseas or what have you. Um, there's lots you can do, you just got to be a bit savvy about it. Whole other skill, <laughs> which I can talk to you about as well if you want. But um, any other quick, quick questions? Yes. Is there any way to make it more secure so that people can just see everything? Yes, absolutely. And I will show you this because that's a really good question. Um, you want to come to manage settings. You can put your password in again to get to. You. And then you go to here and Select who can see your activity feed, so that some people can block and um, not have that on there. Select what they see when they view your profile. So if you're looking around, you can be anonymous and switch it off if you want to. And select what this, where are we looking at? Choose your profile photo and visibility. Do you know you get less clicks on if you switch your photo off? Um, but yeah, that will change your photo. Um, Yeah, so you've got edit your public profile. I'm looking for the one where it comes up on the site, which is this one. Yeah, you can click it on and off here. 
can say I don't want people to see my voluntary, I don't want people to see my groups. Um, and sometimes that's a good one to check off. Um, but most of those are really worth having. There are very few I women. Um, but that is your public vote one visible to everyone. And you've got, ah, I don't know. <laughs> I just thought I could have made that happen then. Um, yeah, but you can manage it there, get an idea and play around with it. And don't forget, when you're on your profile, you can go view my profile as, and at the top, you've got connections and public, and you can test it out and see what someone can see. So at the moment, if someone who's not connected to me, they see all of this. And that's fine, because I'm marketing myself. Um, it's not the way you want it. So, so help. Cool. I'm happy to carry on, but we packed the gallery room, don't we? If anyone's got more questions, <laughs> you can just come and ask me privately if you want to. Um, feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn. Follow my company page if you want to. I can get to that here, and we'll send out the information anyway. Just click follow at the top, and then um, you'll be seeing like the updates I send out that can be helpful. I think there's some nice updates for relevant for you guys. <laughs> Um, cool, thank you very much for having me. Thank you very much.